The International Space Station has been orbiting the Earth since 2000. Crews conducting experiments, taking spacewalks, living and floating together six months at a time. The commander of the Soyuz crew reporting. We are ready. On board in April 2020, a decorated Navy SEAL from York, Maine, for his third trip into space. And liftoff. Cassidy, Evanish, and Wagner on their way to the International Space Station. A very down-to-earth Captain Chris Cassidy sharing his journey with the Portsmouth Rotary. In 2013, I was not the commander. I was my first long-duration mission. The Russian cosmonaut was the commander, uh, and and that was great. And the this time in 2020. Uh, I had the honor of serving as the commander of the space station. What does that mean on a daily basis? Kind of nothing. Like it does, I'm not barking orders at the crewmates, um, but it it uh, was very rewarding to know that I was representing our country, representing NASA. His mother Jan, a Rotary member. It seems like only yesterday that I was sitting in the bleachers at the little league field, watching one of the interminably long games or freezing to death at the Dover Arena watching my son play. Now with 378 days in space, the fifth longest among U.S. astronauts, and 10 spacewalks tied for most in NASA history. It's hard to convey just how amazing it is to be uh, outside the space station, just in your own one-person spaceship with this visor and the panoramic view of the entire universe before you. We're traveling at five miles a second. So you come up over the Gulf of Mexico, there's Houston, uh, soon Atlanta, soon Washington DC, soon New York, Boston, and then you're heading towards Europe, all in a matter of 10 minutes. Your brain is kind of telling you that you might fall uh, because it still looks like you're holding holding yourself up by one hand, looking down in your toes. There's nothing between your toes and the Earth 250 miles below. Sharing the everydayness of life in space. Each person has their own private crew quarters, which I tell people is about the size of a refrigerator. And in there you have um, some clothing, some pictures of your family on the wall, a computer that you can watch movies on or, or uh, do your um, email or call. Showing what it's like to eat in space, exercise and other relatable things. I made a going to the bathroom instructional video and it turned out pretty funny. This knob right here activates the whole system. A favorite pastime? Looking out at familiar places on Earth, like Houston where he and his wife and children call home and is first on the East Coast, Cape Cod's tail, a guide. So I would go Boston and then I would find Pease Air Force Base and that would get me to the, you know, the greater Portsmouth Seacoast area. And then if I wanted to find my mom's house, I could, that, I would find the York River. Loved ones below alerted by text when the ISS would fly over. And it'll just appear exactly from the direction that they tell you. And you just watch it and it slowly goes over. Sometimes it depends on the orbit. Sometimes it's as long as four or five minutes. Sometimes it's only a minute or two. But I would always say, hi, Chris, I love you, I love you. And mom and I were out on the front yard kind of watching and being like, saying to each other, can you believe Chris is on that thing? <laughs> He and brother Jeff, small town kids who loved sports. Chris played basketball at York High School and played summers in Portsmouth, becoming an astronaut nowhere on his horizon. I wanted to be an NBA basketball player, but then I realized that's not gonna happen. And so I wanted to be, an, I switched to wanting to be an NBA basketball referee. His trajectory marked by both rejection and persistence. The first step attending the Naval Academy almost didn't happen. I filled out all those things for the congressional nomination and went for my interview and the staff person said, good job, we'll, we'll take care of it from here. And but by the spring of his senior year, the Academy still had no record of his application. So he drove to Annapolis, asked for an admissions officer and got a call a week later. And he, he said, Mr. Cassidy, I've got 
I can get you into the Navy prep school. You need to tell me right now. And he said, this is Captain Melillo from Annapolis. You need to tell me right now if you want to go. That gentleman's decision to, to say, I believe in this kid. I think I want, to, I want to try and help this kid. That made the rest of his career path possible. And I like to share that story because any one of us could be the Captain Melillo for anybody. Chris went to the Naval Academy, then joined the SEALs team, deployed four times. They discovered this labyrinth of caves um, in Afghanistan that had belonged to um, Osama bin Laden. So he got the Bronze Star with V for Valor. And I personally think that presidential unit citation is pretty amazing because it's for the unit, as mom said, the entire unit, and it was the mission that he led. Applying to the space program twice, accepted in 2004, one of only three SEALs ever selected. As a member of our nation's armed forces, I know firsthand what it's like to face an enemy on the front lines. However, today, thousands of civilians around the world and across America are on the front lines facing an enemy that you cannot see. Honoring pandemic heroes from space. We, the crew of Expedition 63, and all of us at NASA, would like to give a sincere thank you to each and every one of you. You are all an inspiration. Thank you for keeping our loved ones healthy, and America going. We're all in this together, no matter where we may be. Retiring at the end of 2021. Being in space is, is really super cool, and I wish everybody could experience it, because I think everybody would be work harder to make life on Earth better, uh, cooperate more, take care of the planet, uh, when you have this unique view from, from up there. but. But it's, I'm glad that to, to move on and let other folks experience it.